Welcome to CAD Tutorials, and in this video, I'll be covering practice problem 7.5. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and just subscribe. And if you like this video, just hit the thumbs up button, and I'd really appreciate that. So let's get into the question. And the question says, find I, IO, and VO for all T, which is for all time, right? So let's start with T less than zero, or when time is less than zero. Given this particular circuit, as you can see here, the switching action takes place at t is equal to zero, which means we actually open this up at t is equal to zero, and otherwise it's actually closed. So at time less than zero, this part is actually closed, and we have the effect of this current source in play. So we have the four ohms over there, and we have IO indicated there, then we have since we have an independent source and we have an inductor here, it's going to become a short circuit. And a short circuit in parallel, as you can see, these two are in parallel. So a short circuit in parallel with a resistor value is going to result in a short circuit, right? And that is why we have a short circuit over there. And here we have two ohms with a VO indicated across it. And here we have I indicated just here. We have I. Okay, so this is our circuit for time less than zero or for t less than zero. So now let's proceed to find each of these values for t less than zero. So as you can see, this current actually goes and at this junction or at this part here, it actually splits into i and i0, which means 24 is equals to i plus i0, right? So this whole thing here, it splits into two currents, which are i and i0. So now let's do current division, which is uh, just about one of the quickest ways to find one of these. So let's first find IO. So to find IO using current division, we're going to say IO is equal to 24 multiplied by 2, which is the other one, and divided by 4 plus 2, and 4 plus 2 is 6. So we're going to have division like that, which means our IO is 4 multiplied by 2, which is 8 amperes. Now that we have our IO, and we said that uh, 24 is equal to I plus IO, which means 24 is equal to I plus 8, which means I is equal to 24 subtract 8. You can confirm this answer using current division, which you can basically do by doing current division to find I, and then confirm this particular answer over here. But these are the two answers which you should get for time less than zero for I and I zero. Moving on to VO. Now let's check the position of VO. It's across the two ohm resistor and therefore VO is equal to, let's check the current which is coming in. It's I and it goes through the positive terminal first, which means VO is equal to two multiplied by I. And therefore two, we'll find our I to be 16, two multiplied by 16, which is gonna be 32 volts. So these are all our values for t less than zero. So let's just leave them there. We're going to use them as we sum up our question. Moving on to time greater than zero. So for time greater than zero, this is what is going to happen over here. We're going to have this switching action, which means the effect of this current source will be out, or we'll effectively take this current source out. So taking the current source out, we are left with the storage element, its value, or the value associated with it does not change abruptly. And the particular value which you're talking about is current for an inductor. So this inductor current which we found for time less than zero is the same which we're going to find just after zero because the current of an inductor doesn't change abruptly or instantaneously. So our i which we found just before zero is equal to the i which we're going to find just after zero. And this is going to help us. And the value of that is 16 amperes. So now interested in finding these values for time greater than zero. So from zero to infinity or something like that. So now what do we have? We have this from this formula over here. We know for sure that this hasn't changed because it cannot change abruptly, as I said. So now when this current gets to this point, it splits into that 
and something that goes in that direction. Now this current which goes in this direction, as you can see, it opposes the direction of IO. IO actually goes like that. So this is IO and whatever this is, is in the opposite direction. So when you do our current division to find the current which actually goes through here, you're going to say this I, which is the total which splits at this point, you're going to say I multiply by, by 3, which is that one, which is the other one, because these two are the sum of this, which is 6, is essentially in parallel with the top part. So when doing a current division, we're going to say I, which is the total current, which has been split between the two sides. So I multiplied by 3 divided by 3 plus 6, and this 6 is a combination of 4 and 2. They're in series and therefore share the same current. So I multiply by 3 divided by 3 plus 6, which is 9. So we're going to have 3 at the bottom. We're going to have cancel that. going to have 3 at the bottom. We're going to have 1 at the top. And therefore, this current, let's call it I1, this current which goes from this junction towards the 2 and the 4, which is the opposite, or which is the negative of IO. So I1 is equal to negative IO, right? Because they have opposite directions, which is equal to this value over here. So which is I divided by 3, right? So this is basically what we have. This is the relationship which we have, and we're going to use it shortly. So now we know for sure that I of T is equal to the initial current multiplied by E to the negative T divided by the time constant. So we first have to find the initial condition. So we found the initial condition. We know that from the first part of the question where we found T less uh, I at T less than zero. So we know this part. We know t is just a variable and we have to find the time constant and this is how we go about doing that so first i have to find rth with respect to this storage element so finding rth with respect to that we're going to have a circuit like this we can have three at the top we can have six at the bottom which is the combination of four and two so this is going to be six over there so these two are in parallel, and therefore we have 3 in parallel with 6 as our RTH. And the value of this is going to be 3 multiplied by 6 divided by 3 plus 6, which is 9, divide that. Then we're going to have 2. And therefore our RTH with respect to the storage element is 2 ohms, right? Now that we have our 2 ohms, this is going to help us to find our time constant. So the time constant, when we have an inductor resistor in our an LR, that's what it's called, an RL circuit, we're going to have L divided by R. And the value of the inductor in this question is given to us as just 1 Henry. So we're going to substitute L as 1. We're going to substitute R as the RTH, which we just found, which is 2. And therefore, our time constant is 0 0.5 seconds. Substituting all of this or substituting all of this information into this formula is going to give us a formula for I of T or of I for time greater than zero. So this is what we're going to have. Let's substitute everything which we found. So I of T is equal to I zero, which is that 16 E to the minus T divided by 0 0.5, which is our time constant, which we just found and not forgetting the units, which is amperes. So now just simplifying this by saying one divided by 0 0.5, which should be two. And therefore I of T is equal to 16 E to the minus two T amperes. So that is one of the values for time greater than zero. Let's move on to find the other values. So now that we have a formula for that, we can take that off. We have that. But we established that I1, which is the negative of IO, is I divided by 3. And therefore, we can say IO is equal to negative I divided by 3. So we actually negate this and divide by 3, so which is going to be 16E to the minus 2T. So negate that and then divide by 3. And your IO should therefore be 5.333E to the minus 2T amperes. So that is your IO for time greater than zero. So we now have two values and we have one to go. So VO is equals to, if you look at IO over here, it encounters the negative of VO first and therefore the relationship between the two is going to be negative VO is equals to 2 multiplied by IO and we found our IO just now. So VO 
is equal to negative 2 multiplied by IO, which is going to give us a, a value of, so you're basically just going to multiply negative 2 by the formula of your IO, which you just found. And the answer should be VO for time greater than 0 is equal to 10. Point six six seven e to the minus 2t volts. So now we have all these values and you can do a quick summary of what we just found. So this is the summary. So we're going to say i, let's start with i. So i is actually 60 amperes for, and that is for time less than zero. And for time greater than zero, it is 16 e to the minus 2 amperes for time greater than zero. Then we have IO. It was a time less than zero. The value of IO was 8 amperes for time less than zero. And for time greater than zero, we found our IO to be negative 5.333, right? That is the value which we found. E to the minus 2t amperes for time greater than zero. Right. So that is what we found. And we next gonna just summarize our VO. So the summary of our VO is gonna go like this. So the value of VO is gonna be, let's look for it, 32 volts for time less than zero. And for time greater than zero, our VO was 10.667 e to the minus 2t volts. And that is how you basically solve this problem. We solved it a long time ago. This is this is just a summary of everything. I is equal to that. And IO is equal to that. And finally, VO is equal to that.